Hi everyone, welcome to this talk on the Capricorn full moon. It is a really interesting full moon and I wanted to bring it to your attention here that it's deeply related to reputation. And a full moon is some sort of conclusion. So we're looking at someone's reputation coming to a conclusion. Okay, now where Capricorn is in your chart might signify the scenario so that we can look deeper at the details of who that someone might be. It's also very possible that you are that someone and where Capricorn's in your chart is where you own that title, where you are the manager of that area of your chart. Capricorn is related to legacy in many ways, but you know what also is? Pisces. And the rulership of Pisces is Neptune. And Neptune is making a sextile to this Capricorn full moon, which I feel is going to signify a harmonious move towards who you are really meant to be and what you're supposed to leave behind. I think that a lot of people will be tapping into their purpose at this full moon, recognizing where it is that they have given too much authority to someone else and where it is that it's time for them to take back that authority. I also think that this has a lot to do with what authority really means. And I think that with Pluto being in Capricorn uh, for a certain amount of time, it's been happening for a while that Pluto has been transiting Capricorn. Yeah, Pluto's really been purifying what authority is because in many ways, as Pluto has been going through Capricorn, we've been seeing certain people rise to the top unassumed people rise to the top with extraordinary new reputations and new control. And then we've seen certain people falling from the top due to maybe over abuse and authority due to not really showing strong and true leadership. And so it's been difficult for many of us because some of us who have really adored certain people at the top, we've watched them fall and, and we've had to recognize where it is that maybe they have not made the best moves for their business and businesses can mean many things, right? And it can be almost really fatal to watch such things, but it doesn't mean that this person is any less than it really just means that the people who are falling from their titles are are experiencing a transit of being closer to humanity closer to their real selves their their fallen selves their flawed selves and and for us who maybe have put certain people at a high high pedestal and they haven't taken the responsibility of being in that authority we're just now seeing them as regular people now and that's okay too and then, like I've been saying, there may be certain people that are rising to the top because of the caliber and the merit of their work, maybe under recognized people who were always, you know, just under the radar, maybe just certain people where it's clearly their time and certain people who may be more unassuming. And, and here they are at the top of their field, of their scenario where the house is. So who are you and where are you? This probably means a lot for you. And so for the people who are rising to the top, congratulations. <laughs> and for the people who may be experiencing their own fall, don't worry, I am included. It might be very much a, a beautiful chance for you to recognize that your legacy is about coming back down to your truest human self. Don't underestimate the power of being amongst everyone and how that reputation can truly affect people. So let's just go briefly through the houses. If you guys would like, if you're watching this in the after run, I will have timestamps down below. And let's just go through the houses, Capricorn, through the houses to see how this may be working out in your chart. Now, if you've got Capricorn in the first house, this more than likely is directly related to you. It's very possible that you are the person who is everyone's looking at right and what of, of the recognition is that you are getting whether it's a rise or a fall it's deeply connected to your um legacy it's about who you are and your identity as the authority you may have been going through many trials and tribulations and understanding the true understanding of what it means to be in control you may have experienced certain situations where you have learned how to control yourself over having to control others and most specifically how people relate to you when they first meet you because the first house is uh, first impressions in a lot of ways and also how can you con control your identity when other people may have been trying to control your identity 
This also may um, contribute to what that rise and fall is. And the sextile of Neptune to the first house can glamorize you really um, helping people to see that you are a little bit above everyone because of this glamorization, this idea of what you are, this memory of what you will be. That's what Neptune adds to the table. And for you, it may be a very enriching experience, whether you're gaining a title or losing a title. Okay, Capricorn in the second house is deeply related to your legacy and your income. And you may be experiencing with Neptune sextile here, some sort of situation of charity because Neptune quite often is where we give. And, um, and a lot of the times people give without wanting to receive anything back or knowing they won't. That also relates to Neptune. So with it being in your second house, Neptune sextile, the full moon in your second house, this can deeply relate to your ability to give without wanting to receive or your ability to receive without having to give. This could be um, a, a, a title that you take on in which you are managing or, or writing checks for people. It may be a title that you are losing where you don't have to do this anymore. Um, and the, the authority of the abuse of power when it comes to money might be thematic here for you and how it is that you can control your income, your money management um, will really pull you more in that authority versus having to control everyone else's, which is really out of line with the second house, but can probably be something that happens here because um, the Capricorn, that Saturnian energy wants to be in charge of something and it has to recognize what belongs to it so that it can truly be in charge of the thing that belongs to it. In the third house, Capricorn in the third house is deeply related to your authority in your community, your nearby, your neighborhood, and, and the people that you relate to in, in your neighboring towns and in your neighborhood, right here, right in front of you. The space of uh, that you can influence is right there, right in front of you. And some of you may have had an authority and you're learning what that true concept of authority is. Neptune can bring about some miscommunication that has maybe coming to clarity at this time. Maybe certain secrets that people didn't feel comfortable telling. Maybe certain um, con conversations that needed to be held in privacy and secret. Um, and Neptune can also help you to be respected deeply for this for this honoring of someone's privacy or this honoring of someone's, um, you know, personal space, basically. Uh, and, and maybe also Neptune comes with less judgment for Capricorn. And I could really say this across the board, but in the third house, it may be less judgment in how you speak to other people. This could truly be what helps to sink in what your reputation is and what your title is, especially if you really can embrace that Neptune energy right now. And how can you control your communication with people? You may have been in a space where you were trying to control other people's communication. Um, and this happens a lot with Capricorn. You know, it, it almost tries to be like, you know, Scorpio trying to, to be merged with others, but actually is needing to have that distance with others. And um, when the distance um, uh, continues, uh, right when the distance is locked in and you're operating with other people, but you have distance, right? But you're trying to control them. It, it creates this abuse of power that I think we're really learning with Pluto. And um, it's about being able to maintain that distance, but also communicate from your own self-control and regulation, which actually creates this vibe where people deeply respect you. So those of you who may be losing a title, it might be you learning these lessons in this way. And those of you gaining the title, it may be you gaining these lessons. So these are lessons still to be learned. And as you embrace this new title that you may have in your community, you are um, going to be faced with those brand new challenges, right? Um, or you have been, really, the full moon would, would actually correct me in saying that you have been faced with those challenges. And um, do, can you live up to the title? All right. And this is deeply connected to those conversations and the reputation you have in your community. Um, now, Capricorn in the fourth house, this is connected to an abuse of power in the family dynamic. 
And some of you may be um, gaining new titles in the family d dynamic that are deeply, more deeply respected. Uh, versions of you, especially with the sextile to the Capricorn full moon, to Neptune, some of you are really here to help the ancestry and heritage of your family as well. And um, it may be coming to a deep conclusion that maybe certain people have undermined your abilities and or your reputation in the family and are now coming to conclude that yes, you are the one to be watched, the one to be recognized. Now, some of you may be coming and falling from a certain title in the family, and it might actually be a deep relief for you. I really feel the sex of Neptune makes this so much easier. Um, and I feel like a lot of people are making it like, oh, this is an intense full moon. But I think it's it intense because of the emotional aspect to it in which it is deeply healing. Some of you need a relief from being the one who controls everything in the family. And some of you may be taking a step down from having to be the one that carries that burden. Now, uh, Capricorn in the fifth house is deeply connected to your creativity, your ability to date and, um, and to basically overall enjoy life. And with Capricorn here, natally, naturally, you are someone who has to kind of you take uh, you either take having fun real seriously right which means that you're the one who's like the conductor of your fun or um you're you don't have enough fun because everything is so serious so depending on what your path is this is a time where some of you are, are losing the reins of being the one to control how your dating life goes you may have um a moon energy like Cap like the full moon that's there some sort of feminine energy that's taking more of the control. It might be a conclusive understanding that it's time for you to let down your title, let down your authority in this arena, allow someone else to help you or allow someone else to lead, lead the way for you. And then some of you, you may be embodying that full moon and you may be being the person who's in the authority of dating. You might be the one who's setting up the dates, figuring out where you're going to go and paying for it. This is really, really interesting because it, it definitely tags a social trend, right? The fifth, looking at the 11th house, opposite of it. We'll talk more about it in the 11th house, but from a dating aspect, it may be breaking also down barriers for what, um, who should lead in the dating aspect. And for you on your personal journey, if you have Capricorn in the fifth house, you're figuring out what that is, right? There may have been an abuse of power of somebody else controlling everything. And that's also what robs the joy from you. A lot of you may be recognizing that in order to really enjoy your joy, you can't control other people's joy. You can't control other people's desires. You can control what it is that you love, you get joy out of, and giving yourself more of those things. In the sixth house, Capricorn full moon in the sixth house is going to be sextile Neptune, which gives this sense of, um, you know, a deep connection to your calling. I definitely want you guys to check out my sixth and twelfth house worksheets. They are amazing. And if you have Capricorn in the sixth house, I go deeply into what this means. Um, but your calling is really connected to uh, being a manager of something and someone. And some of you guys have, may have manager fields where you're taking a step away. It may deeply be connected to not feeling the passion for the actual work itself. So it's like, yeah, you're supposed to be a manager, but not in this field. And, and that really is the shift in your own legacy to find the true calling. And then some of you are, are stepping into finally the manager position you deserve. You know, you may have been beaten down, underestimated, undermined in certain fields where you knew exactly what needs to be done to make it work efficiently and to make it be what it could be. And now you may be having a conclusive recognition that you are the one to take over these certain roles. Either way, the sextile from Neptune makes it so powerfully long lasting in the sense of even if it's not in this role, it will be an understanding what it took for you to get there. And it may be the struggle itself and what it is that you harness in the struggle that makes the legacy actually what it is. In the seventh house, Capricorn is deeply related to the authority in a relationship. And we don't always talk about this, but especially when you have Capricorn here, there may be a dynamic where one person is more dominant than the other. And with Pluto being here over a certain amount of time, you may have been going through relationships, 
the ones that are the more serious types, the more committed types, the leading to marriage types or leading to a long business relationship type that you have, um, you know, played a dominant submission, um, role and, and somebody had to discover where it is that they both were attracting their situation. So whether you were the submissive one, why is it that you were attracting a more dominant person? Were you actually showing that you can control yourself or were you um, giving out an energy that you need someone to control you and vice versa if you were the more dominant in a relationship it might be more of well hmm, was I the one who was looking for someone to dominate over and this is why I've had relationships where maybe I've been accused of being the more dominant or maybe even some of you have been accused of being more abusive I don't like to usually go too dark in my readings, um, but I just want to keep it there as a practical thing because it doesn't necessarily mean that you are, but you may have attracted it. You may have attracted it. Sometimes certain relationships pull out a version of us, right? And sometimes we are also pulling a version of us. Like we need to feel more con in control and this is what, how we can do it. And with, with Capricorn in the seventh house, there's really a need to find that balance right now. Uh, there, whatever decision that you make, right, whether you're shifting your roles in your relationship or ending a relationship right now, this full moon may really make certain of those things come to play and it will be divine in divine order. It will be in order ordained situation as Neptune is making the sextile. It really means that the gods, the heavens, the angels, the ancestors are working in both of your favors at this time. Okay, if you have Capricorn in the eighth house, this is a place where you are probably given a lot of authority by somebody else's resources. You might be someone who um, could even be accused of being spoiled here. Um, and I think a lot of people don't touch on that, but I think it can really happen here in this area because Capricorn is saying that you are deserving of other people's things. And then Capricorn is the cream of the crop. So it's the highest level of other people's things. Now, if some of you may be the ones who are accused of spoiled, some of you may be the ones who feel like you didn't get anything at all. And um, there's a deep level here with Neptune that enmeshes both of the, the situations. Someone who feels like they didn't get anything at all may be not recognizing that they had everything. And someone who is accused of being spoiled may not have recognized that they had everything and didn't use it. So um, they're both almost in the same pot here. And Neptune really helps me to make that a, an interpretation. Neptune is about, well, we're both enmeshed here. Okay. Um, now this place also is connected to intimacy. And so there may be a conclusion also about you and sexual partners. Um, it's something to, to go along the lines of also a, a dominant submission level, just like I talked about in the seventh house, but on a more sexual, um, uh, right on the more sexual terms here. And this might be a time where someone is taking the step back from that and it might be extremely healing for them to do so. And it might be also a time where someone is taking a more dominant role in their sexual activity. And that too could be very healing to do so. What we don't recognize in, in the eighth house is the extremities and why the trauma happens from the extreme. So someone who is not as sexual may need the healing of being more sexual, being more active. And then maybe someone who is overactive might need the extreme of taming that down. So it really depends on where you're at. And then all, all the, the moon and the planets do is they give you that extremity here. They give you the other experience. The, the contrast itself creates healing in its own way. Sometimes w when we're in certain situations, we can't see what else is possible until we're put in a complete opposite version of that situation. And the eighth house really, really shows that to you. This is why you, cr you become almost metamorphosized by the um, situation itself. So I think a lot of you may be coming out of that metamorphosis right now. And some of you might be actually going into the metamorphosis as you're faced with an extreme situation that um, you have to now learn to adapt to and see what grows out of you from there. In the ninth house, Capricorn is deeply related to our um, faith. And this is um, 
someone who also has dominance in the regions of spirituality. So I could really feel that some of you guys are actual leaders, gurus, um, life coaches, you know, spiritual um, leaders with Capricorn in the ninth house. Now, Pluto here has been really cleaning up this house. So maybe it's you or maybe it's people around you that have been getting off of their high horse, discovering that they're not necessarily the best ones to lead people in their spirituality. This could also be a place where, you know, people follow blindly to some sort of cult concept, maybe in this conclusive uh, full moon that some of you are finding that some of these people are coming out of the woodwork. They're kind of showing that they have not necessarily been the right leaders in faith for people. People have followed them in the most blind faith, followed the humanness of them versus you know, the, the idea that they're giving. This is really interesting how this place works out because Capricorn creates such practicality. Um, and you can also find that, you know, certain people who maybe have abused their authority and spirituality from a more Cap Capricornian level, right? So certain people maybe who have, you know, charged a certain amount of money and, um, maybe it was it was too much money or maybe right they they did something in order to get to the top that wasn't um based out of their own teachings it could be something like that um now there's certain people who are rising to the top right it, it's almost as if the the need here is to have a leader with capricorn being in your ninth house is that leader you it may be you it may be embodying the moon energy which is a more feminine energy so maybe you are the new leader with that new feminine energy that cares a little bit more than typical capricorn energy would um or maybe the person that you're looking up to with the new guy the new educator the new coach also is has that more um aesthetic that feeling of comfort of nourishment um so this is a time where it's truly tapping into the legacy of your faith um you'll it might be something that you look back on and recognize it to be a monumental phase in your life where you chose to either switch faiths or chose to come down off of some sort of um, authority in your own faith and some of you may also be looking at it as this was the time where people appointed you as the new leader of a certain faith. Now, the 10th house is a literal title of authority. It's the typical CEO boss, right? And with Neptune here, it's it's deeply related to them being somebody that is remembered forever. And some of you guys are experiencing some sort of moon energy, whether it's you or a person playing that, that becomes almost an authority for you it's so that you can actually reinforce your own control over yourself. Really, really interesting. I think that this is the most typical place where I need to talk about self-control um, because it's the natural place for Capricorn. And with Pluto going through here, this is the theme of the world in general that is the leaders um, of of the governments that need to operate off of their own self-control. And if you've got Capricorn in the 10th house, you too are a leader of a government. And some of you may not even know that. I think Neptune is is trying to, to show here, the Neptune sextile is showing here that some of you haven't seen your authority. Some of you might felt have felt undermined. Um, and so this Lilith, this, I'm, I wanted to say Lilith, <laughs> it's not Lilith, it's just the moon, <laughs> but the moon energy um, is maybe even acting a little bit like Lilith because she has to destroy the place where you are undermining yourself naturally. Um, and it's really hard for Capricorn to get that from the moon energy. Capricorn is so like sure of itself. And then if the moon comes here, it's like, please, you know? So the moon energy might show a dominant effect that will really snap you into your authority or snap you out of the authority that did not belong to you. It's really, really powerful here because it is the dynamic of opposites. It's gonna be something that you would think would not, would be weak where you are strong, you know what I'm saying? Or be strong where you are weak. And it's really showing itself here um, in the 10th house. So it's a time for you to understand that your legacy is deeply related to this shifting of powers, which brings you back into your power. This is the powerful thing of Capricorn in the 10th house. You're always meant to be in charge. But how have you been managing your authority? This is the question to answer. 
Okay, Capricorn in the 11th house is connected to your authority amongst your alliances. And some of you are growing in recognition, making you deeply influential. Um, and it's it's a mo it's the time it's a destined time it's a moment you have needed to have um, it, it but some of you are coming down off of that authority and you've been influential now and you're learning that you're not as up to the trends or you're not what is in trend at the moment and it can be a humbling experience because the 11th house is looking back at the fifth house where we have our joy so um for those who are rising in authority you're in in your influence you're learning how to take on new challenges of self-control um so that you're not trying to control your followers your supporters your alliances um but they're inspired by your own self-control and for those who may be coming off of a title conclusively it's a time for you to find back your joy um find back what inspires and influences you and don't be um, afraid of being able to take a step back so that you can actually get yourself back ready for the time when that wave comes back towards you. So being able to recognize that the, the sphere of influence is, is constantly in, in influx. And if you don't have a moment to come off of the influence, you can't see where everyone is going. So you can't, you can't project that your influence will last. Influence is kind of finicky in a lot of ways, um, and it's erratic. It's erratic because this 11th house is Uranus ruled in its natural place. You may not have Uranus here, but that energy of, of Capricorn being in Uranus's space will show to you that humbly you have to know how to get ready for everything to come over you and for everything to change. But in the beauty of that knowing, that's where your true authority can be. Instead of trying to control everyone to stay in one place, to stay in one source of inspiration, because inspiration is constantly moving. And if we try to control everyone to stay here and hone in on this is what you should be inspired by, this is what is popular, stay here in this popular world, you might actually set a lot of people back because the trends are always moving. So to be in the flow of losing your title here, it can be a beautiful legacy for you. It really shows you the truer power. We always think that we have to sustain a, a, a level of authority. And in the 10th and the 11th house, because the 11th house is what I'm speaking of, but it, it really reigns true, I believe, for both to know the power of taking a step back. So we come to the 12th house, Capricorn in the 12th house is an authority amongst the ancestors, amongst the angels. And it, and with Neptune being in sextile here, Neptune is the ethers, um, you know, the actual memories, the, the thing that is unseen but lives, which are those memories, supporting you in becoming the new authority in this arena of the the world that we cannot see the the afterlife you're becoming an authority of your own heaven and a lot of you are taking a new authority by speaking or stepping up to your own space just taking up your own space this might be having more time to yourself right and conclusively understanding that that's what you need um, and, and a lot of you may also be taking a step down. Some of you may be coming out of an old, um, relationship to the ancestors. Some of you may have been very blocked from your relationship to the other realms and are experiencing really, um, life changing moments that shatter the 3d reality around you and make you feel that feeling that that almost children have because the 12th house is the bridge back into the first house so it's considered the afterlife and it can also be considered that interim before we come back to life and there's something that a lot of children have that i think um we can that could be an example of here where they we we undermine them because they're little and they they don't know our 3d reality but they have they're the closest to the place that we fear the most, the unseen realm. The same thing goes for people who are in their elder years, which actually would probably be a better example for the 12th house. It's that retirement space, you know, the 12th house. So people who are also moving towards the end of their life, right? Um, 
there's this level of being closer to the unseen realm. So they have this relationship to the unseen realm or they're building back their relationship to the unseen realm. It's such a scary part for, uh, uh, for some of us, even me, I feel it because we are confronted with our mortality here. But when you allow yourself to open up to your mortality, so when you're face to face with this physical realm and what's beyond it, I think that it shatters you and it opens you up to the love that truly creates this world that we live in, this, this galaxies and the universe that, that we all have to glue together in order to be what we are, right? Even, um, even everything that's beyond what we are. So it, it's really hard to put it into words, but I think that it's a feeling that a lot of you who have Capricorn in the 12th house are going to experience. And it feels very, very new, but it's the truest, um, uh, light, the truest truth, which is your immortality. And some of you may have been kind of stoic and blocked from that because Capricorn is so practical. And, but with it being in the 12th house, it's kind of breaking past that practicality. It's breaking past, you know, the world of science and, and everything that builds. And so I think a lot of you are, pull, are actually being pulled, um, into an authority in the, in the other world versus going for the authority that we find in our everyday lives here in the 3d world which is you know being a boss of something being in charge of something here it's a, it's a different type of authority when you understand the the beyond and so i think a lot of you are probably faced more with that feeling more than all of this contemplation that i'm uh, providing for you but it's even in that the limitations of me to explain it to you the 12th house just completely it dissipates it and it's really more of this sense of connection.